And last but certainly not least is the 3D camera. Uh, just like the particle emitter, this is something that is kind of easy to get started. It's a little tricky, but it's hard to sort of turn into something creative. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create three text elements. And I'm calling these stage one, two, and three because I'm going to move them around a little bit. And we're going to actually think of these like an actual set that you might have uh, in a video production or in a theater. So right now these three text elements are just right here in the screen and that's all we know about them. Now I'm going to go up to Object and I'm going to go New Camera. You get a little message here that says, hold on a second. Uh, you're creating a 3D camera, but all of your objects are in two-dimensional space. So all we have to do is click Switch to 3D. Notice that when we do that, this little icon right here on the group changes into a 3D icon. That's how I know it is 3D. Well, right now, as you look in the timeline, you have a camera that goes across the top of the timeline, and we have our three text elements. And again, these texts could be anything. Uh, right now, I'm just using that text because it's going to help us kind of see what's happening in a second. We got some new controls up here around the canvas as well. First, we're going to look at this one here that's uh, the camera view mode. It says active camera. Basically, everything that we see is the exact way it's going to look once we export our motion project. As soon as we change this to one of these other options, then we're kind of stepping outside the camera. So imagine if you were filming an interview, you could stand to the left or right of the camera, and what you would see would be completely different than if you were standing right behind the camera or looking through the viewfinder. One thing that's super cool that we can do with motion that you can't do really in an interview situation is to view the whole scene from the top. Now you could do this if you were in a theater class and coming across the catwalk. So as I click on top, check this out. Okay, I'm gonna have to zoom out, command minus to zoom out. That little yellow line is what the camera sees and this little yellow rectangle is the camera itself. So that's our new 3D camera. If I did nothing else to this project, it would be just like any other motion project. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to manipulate those three text elements in this new 3D space. You see we have the X and Y axis and the camera sees exactly what's in the middle. So I'm going to click on stage three and just to keep it really simple, I'm going to move using these arrow controls. And notice in the bottom right hand corner of my screen that I no longer see stage three because I've just moved it outside of the active camera. Look at that, now it's in the active camera range, now it's outside. So I'm gonna move this up front. I'm gonna click on stage two. Notice I'm gonna move that out of the active camera in the bottom right hand corner. And I'm gonna move it a little bit further back. So now as I select the camera again, you get the yellow highlight showing you that the camera is selected and it shows you the active camera. And I'm gonna switch back to the active camera mode. Only thing left is stage one because I've moved those other text elements in that wide 3D space that we just created with our 3D camera. Now we're gonna use simple behaviors to get the camera to move to those other two objects. Uh, let's select the camera because that's what we want to add the behavior to. Go to Behavior, Camera, we're going to choose Framing. And when we choose Framing, we see a purple element that goes across the bottom of the camera clip, if we want to call it that, in the timeline. And if I hit the spacebar, nothing happens. Essentially, this framing control needs a little bit more information. Hit the letter D to bring up that heads-up display, the dashboard. And I see here that the target says none and this little box is empty. I'm gonna take stage two, lift it up and drag it and hold it for just a second. And you see you get a little kind of curved arrow that says it's gonna drop into that space. And what happens is over the course of this purple line, the camera is going to go from stage one over to stage two. That's pretty cool. What I can do is I can adjust this purple line. Click and drag if I want to do that. Another cool shortcut, just like in Final Cut Pro. As long as I'm careful that I have framing selected, I can hit O and mark an out point. Decide I want it to be a little later, I can click O and mark an out point. Decide I want it to start the move a little sooner, I can hit I and mark an end point. So let's just watch that. Stage one, 
Now the camera starts to move. Stage two. And you'll see that it, it zoomed in to fill the frame. And we could manipulate these options in here. And of course, there's plenty more under the inspector. But let's go ahead and finish this out. Close that, click camera again, and guess what? We're gonna go back, we're gonna add another framing behavior. Since I learned a thing or two about marking in and out points, I'm gonna go ahead and click I and O after repositioning the playhead in the timeline. And then I'm going to hit D to bring up the dashboard. I'm gonna drag stage three into that box there. So now it's gonna go from stage two to stage three. So let's watch the whole transaction. Stage one to stage two. And it's gonna hold. It'll start moving to stage three. And that's a quick overview of the 3D space in Apple Motion.